A case of road rage on I-696 escalates into a stabbing and ends with one man in handcuffs and another in the hospital. From smoke to fire, a mother and her son inside this minivan engulfed in flames just feet away from a gas pump. And feels like fall. Temperatures dip into the 50s tonight. Are we turning the page on the season already? No. Nope. Ben Bailey is tracking your weekend forecast. Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News at 11 starts now. Well, we begin tonight in Roseville where one man is behind bars and another is in the hospital after a road rage stabbing. It started after an altercation on eastbound I-696 and Mound Road, but it didn't stop there. Jermont Terry has a story from Roseville PD. This road rage incident involves two men from the area and one of them sitting here at the police station behind bars arrested. The other is cut and banged up at home recovering after police say the two men started physically fighting each other, but it ended with one guy getting cut. Just before six Friday night, those men were driving separate vehicles on 696 eastbound. But just as they both exited the interstate at 11 mile, something went wrong. You can call it extreme road rage. Roseville police say the drivers started yelling at one another on the curvy ramp. And just as they continued on to 11 mile, both drivers let their tempers get the best of them. Police say both men got out of their cars and started yelling at each other. Those words led to punches. I see two dudes fighting, hitting each other and stuff like that. It all went down in the middle of this residential street. Greg saw it all. Look over and see him fighting, swinging, whatever. That's when police say one man reached for his knife and slashed the other guy's arm. The one who was bleeding terribly, he was gashed open. Now we do know the guy arrested is 34 years old. He is from Roseville. Now apparently, apparently he left the scene and was arrested at his house. Roseville police telling us that they did find that knife that uh, he used to slash the individual. Apparently that knife was found here on scene. Now the big question tonight, it's unclear what actually prompted this road rage. Was someone cut off? Was there a minor accident? Police are still investigating, but I can tell you one thing, this is not the way I Either men expected their drive home to go tonight. For now, reporting live in Roseville, Jermont Terry, Local 4. Sure they didn't, Jermont. Okay, thank you. Well, fewer than 1,000 DTE customers are without power tonight since Wednesday storms. Luckily, they won't need the air conditioning for the weekend. That's one bright spot, I guess. You may not even want to sleep with the windows open tonight. Oh, man. Uh, we're barely into the 60s, and we've still got some showers out there, Kim. A couple of those are light. Most of them are, as a matter of fact. Uh, and these will be fading probably within the hour or so. And then we're going to be left with dry conditions overnight. And eventually some sunshine once we get towards daybreak tomorrow, uh, at least for the first part of Saturday. The other story is the temperatures right now outside uh, just holding on to 60 at Ann Arbor. The rest of us are in the low to mid 60s and the winds have mercifully calmed down. At least we're not seeing those gusts over 30 miles an hour that we were seeing earlier. Temperatures in the morning, 58 in our metro zone, moving to 72 at noon. Uh, we're not going to get much warmer than that in the afternoon. And we'll look at our next rain chance, which is just around the corner coming up in a few minutes. Kim. Okay, Ben, one minute she was on Instagram posting about her upcoming birthday party. The next minute she was dead. 14 year old Jamisha McWilliams was shot and killed last night inside her home on Detroit's east side. A drive by shooter hit her in the chest. Her 18 year old brother was also shot. He's in critical condition tonight. Jamisha's mother says she had just started her first job and made the varsity cheerleading squad. She didn't even get to enjoy her first check. She didn't even get to put on her cheerleading costume. She didn't even get to do her first cheer. She studied the whole summer to be on the team, and she didn't even get to go to her first game. This is so wrong on so many levels. Police say the shooter was driving a silver or green Ford Windstar minivan. This fire inside a party store on Detroit's east side was no accident, and the surveillance video here proves that. The video shows a person dressed in coveralls and a mask walking into the Chalmers liquor store early this morning. They set a broom on fire here. Watch as he throws it and then runs off. Fire ensues. The inside of the store was destroyed. Nobody heard in that, though. A potentially explosive situation at a gas station in downtown Detroit. A woman with car trouble drives her minivan to the Sunoco on 1st Street. She and her son get out. Then seconds later, it bursts into flames and is fully engulfed just feet from the pumps. 
Firefighters get there within minutes and are quickly able to put it out before it spreads. Neither that mom or her son were hurt. The man accused of causing a horrific crash at a bus stop in Warren appeared in court today. 55-year-old Gary DeLeo is charged with operating while intoxicated and reckless driving. Six people were hit when his pickup slammed into the bus stop Wednesday evening. Four of them were pinned under the vehicle. I've seen some horrific accidents and things like that, but uh, nothing of this magnitude. After the crash, police say DeLeo didn't help anyone and instead walked into the nearby subway to use the bathroom. Five of the people hurt remain in the hospital. A 16-year-old boy tries to steal a man's gun but ends up taking a bullet instead. 61-year-old Darius Summers was going to the gas station to get a cup of coffee when the teen tried to take his gun at gunpoint. But Summers just got his concealed carry license that day, so he wasn't about to just give it up. Watch as the next thing that happens is a standoff. The kid gets shot there in the stomach. He ends up picking up his gun and limping out of the store. I didn't shoot to kill. I, shoot, I shot to save his life. I got him up off me. The teen was arrested and charged with assault, carrying a weapon, and a felony firearms violation. At least seven major retailers and big box stores are closing locations across Michigan this year. Some of them anchor malls in Metro Detroit. The landscape is changing along with our shopping habits, but the question is, is retail dead? One high profile retail opening this week says otherwise. Mara McDonald live in Sterling Heights tonight and Mara, the city there starting to see the writing on the wall. Well, I think they're looking at ways to reimagine older retail, Jace. I mean, Lakeside's been here quite a while. Whereas down the street, you've got something new that just opened up that is a different kind of retail. So our shopping habits have changed, which means that we need to start reimagining the old. So the internet is killing brick and mortar stores. Well, the opening of the Chesterfield Township Cabela's this week shoots that theory in the foot. Cabela's is as much entertainment and wow factor as it is just selling merchandise. Thousands of people waiting in line, thousands of people every hour on the hour coming through the store over days. Why? Because it's an experience, not just a store, which is why retailers like Cabela's are thriving and in closed malls with mid-tier retailers, many built in the 70s, are having tough times. The thing that we're finding is that the planners had it wrong. Nobody is interested in segmented retail and the hassle of parking and walking. I usually avoid them because there's not exit doors and entrance doors. It's not convenient. I spend more money if I go into a larger mall. Here I go for my particular item, grab a quick bite to eat and I leave. Which is why the city of Sterling Heights started looking at Lakeside years ago. We want to develop something here that attracts people and foot traffic, uh, people to come eat, live here, um, stay here possibly, work here. So yeah, we're looking at all those different aspects. They think they've got a great partner in the new owners here to reimagine the space. So this mall won't be on the casualty list. We are more optimistic now about Lakeside than we've been in years. Back here live, one of the other reasons you're not seeing big enclosed malls like this being built anymore is the maintenance costs. And to put that into perspective to you, do you realize that Lakeside and its parking lot property is as large as the city of Birmingham? We're live in Sterling Heights tonight. I'm Mara McDonald, local four. That's very interesting. You hope that some cities can take a page from this. And yeah, really. Learn a little something. And that really puts it into perspective, Mara, the size of Birmingham. Never <laughs> thought of it that way. We appreciate it. Most unhappy customers don't return to the business. And if they do, they usually have a complaint. This lady had a rifle. Why she was so upset and what went down. A close call for passengers on a plane just seconds into takeoff. What caused the engine to burst into flames? Sandra? Young swimmers learning from their heroes. So it really sort of inspired me. Learning to race in the pool with Olympic gold medalists. See who they help for their chance to learn from the best next. For young swimmers, this is a chance of a lifetime. Since they're like the best of the best, you, you really learn like what you can do to be like as good as they are.
And it doesn't get much better than this for a swim team. Lessons from elite swimmers, two of which have won gold medals at the Olympics. As our Sandra Ali shows us, these young swimmers earned this opportunity by helping make sure other children learn how to swim. He competed in three Olympics, winning two gold and two bronze medals during his swimming career. Peter Vanderkay could live anywhere, but he is staying home in Metro Detroit and spending much of his time motivating young swimmers. He's going to spring forward. Pretty easy, right? You see how far he got? These veteran swimmers make it look easy, and these young students are eager to follow their lead. He's got to keep the pressure on the front of his foot in order to get that really clean entry. It was really nice because I could not dive. And the information that he had given us really sort of helped me have a boost in learning how to dive. Since they're like the best of the best, you, you really learn like what you can do to be like as good as they are. You guys remember, I want to see you keeping that head down in return. The swim team at the Gross Point Yacht Club benefiting from the experience and skill of Olympic gold medalist Peter Vanderkay and Davis Tarwater and Allie DeLoof, who's training with Club Wolverine at U of M to compete in her first Olympic Games in 2020. They're Olympic gold medalists, people have I, that I have looked up to when I was this young. Um, it's just a really nice experience and teaching these kids and letting them know what it's like to be an Olympic level swimmer. Well, hopefully we give them a few tips in the pool so that they'll be a little bit faster. Sharpening their skills in the pool is only one lesson Vanderkay hopes these swimmers get from the swim clinic. Ready, go! The swim team won the Course and Challenge, an annual fundraiser for a cause close to Vanderkay's heart, Detroit Swims. Again, learning about our program and, and what their donations and, and support has meant uh, to kids in the city that will learn to swim and overcome their fear of the water. Detroit Swims is a learn to swim program based out of the Y downtown. Vanderkay began working with Detroit Swims in 2010 because seven out of the 10 kids in the city do not know how to swim. Growing up in Michigan for somebody like me is I can't imagine not knowing how to swim or not being able to go to the pool on a hot summer day. Good job. Tar water is a big supporter. Learning to swim is an imperative, and it crosses state lines, it crosses border lines, it, languages. It's one of the most important life skills that any human being can learn. And regardless of where it is, I want to be a part of it, and I want to support this incredible initiative in Detroit. It's just really nice giving back to the community that I grew up in. I feel terrible for those kids who are my age and still don't know how to swim. Well, one thing is if you get thrown in the lake or something, you won't drown. Also, it's just fun. It's really good exercise. A memorable swim lesson for sure, racing Olympians. Fine-tuning their skills while helping other kids and seeing that Olympic dreams do come true. And Detroit Swims runs on donations. The Course and Challenge raised more than $25,000, which will now pay for 250 children to learn how to swim. Since the program started, it's taught more than 5,800 kids right here in Detroit. I'm Sandra Ali. Back to you. Great hope, program. Yeah, I hope that keeps it. Just goes to show you, too, how much swimming talent we have in the We really Detroit do. Area. Yeah, yeah, we really do. All right, here's a look at what Hank Winchester is working on for Monday night. A flood of trouble for people in this neighborhood. Within an hour, the whole street was flooded. Water everywhere, covering the roadway, soaking into their homes. I just want to cry. I really, I really want to cry. Now I'm working to find out who's responsible for that big mess and when can these people finally get some relief. Is there any sort of compensation or any sort of help that they can get from the city or the county? That's a good question. Help Me Hank investigates Monday at 11. Yeah, Hank getting answers. We Ooh. want answers too. Why is it so chilly out? I mean, it's just uh, we need no. parkas all of a sudden. I don't think you can <laughs> handle the truth. That's what that's I great. think. Uh, you know what? We got rid of the humidity. Yeah, We're going nice. to get the sunshine. It's just not going to be as warm as I think a lot of folks would like mm -hmm. for a weekend in August. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So if you're thinking of heading to the water tomorrow, you may want to rethink that. Uh, we've got some sprinkles that are out there right now on the radar. Those are going to be fading. And you can see we saw a lot more in the western part of the state. Some of those made it over here, but just not much. 
everything has been very light uh, and we should be dry here within about the next hour or so and then looking for dry conditions to carry us into tomorrow morning. Uh, beautiful lights out at the airport with 63 and a lot of clouds too. pretty much everybody's overcast right now. West southwest winds at 13 miles an hour. We still have some wind gusts uh, that are above 20 and we'll look at that in just a second. But here come the 50s out in Ann Arbor. It's 59 Howells at 59 uh, Jackson at 57 and the rest of us barely into the 60s as everybody is going into the 50s for lows tonight and that is below normal for this time of year. Here to look at those wind gusts still 23 miles an hour gusting in Metro Airport. Of course earlier today we had those 30 mile an hour plus gusts uh, very brisk this afternoon. Tomorrow we'll call it breezy but we probably won't see those gusts uh, nearly as high sustained winds of about 10 to 15 maybe gusting up to 20 at times. Here's a look at tonight. As those sprinkles fade, the clouds will at least start to fade by tomorrow morning and we'll call it a mix of sun and clouds in the afternoon. Model trying to put a couple sprinkles back in here in a couple locations. I think the vast majority of us stay dry tomorrow and it's not so much the case on Sunday as we've got a good chance of showers coming in here in the afternoon and you can see those coming in just after lunchtime, starting with some scattered sprinkles and then picking up in intensity as we head towards Monday morning. A good dose of rain coming in there. This is Sunday night after the sun goes down. So lows tonight, 50s everywhere. Warmest temperatures will be at our metro zone as we get to 59 right in the city. 58 officially at the airport in Romulus. South zone temperatures, some of the coolest numbers out there in uh, Lenaway County, 54 Morency and Adrian, 57 back in Luna Pier and 55 in Monroe when you wake up tomorrow night. Not a whole lot of difference in our west zone, generally mid 50s here as we wake up tomorrow morning and the lakes keeping things just a little bit milder up here in Lexington and Sandusky at 59 and then cooler inland temperatures to the mid 50s in Ordonville and Waterford by tomorrow morning. So high temperatures will hit about 77 there about 5 o'clock and again a lot of sunshine to start mixing in clouds in the afternoon. Most of us stay dry. Shower chances become a little bit more numerous as we get into Sunday afternoon and that's going to linger into Monday. But the remainder of the forecast is dry and we finally feel a little bit more like August. Average highs this time of year 83 will at least get there on Thursday and be pretty close for much of next week. A lot of good sleeping weather though, that's yeah, for sure. That's that is a good point. Mm -hmm. Yes. Thanks, Ben. All right. Well, half the charm of a Moscow mule is the copper mug that it's served in, but one place is banning the drink because it could make you sick. We'll explain the science behind it. Also, the terrifying moment a plane catches on fire as it's taking off. You'll see it and hear about it next. The man accused of kidnapping his girlfriend's two-year-old daughter and leading police on a high-speed chase faced new charges today. Grady Barrett was charged with fleeing and eluding, assault, and child abuse. He faces separate federal charges for crossing state lines. This is the Rochester Hills man accused of beating his roommate's cat to death with a hammer. Police say David Hu got upset because the cat scratched and bit him. Hu is charged with killing and torturing an animal. Tomorrow, a historic downtown business will close after losing its lease. Henry the Hatter opened on Broadway Street in 1952, but with rent prices rising, they weren't able to keep up. The business plans to reopen in a new location later this year. For now, the Southfield location is still open. A close call for passengers on an American Airlines jet last October. Their plane burst into flames during takeoff. Newly released video showing the moment the flames started. The plane is on the runway preparing to take off when a broken fan cuts a fuel line. Then the right side of the plane catches fire. All 161 passengers made it off the plane with only one passenger suffering injuries during the evacuation. But what a terrifying moment. Yeah. A woman upset her cell phone wasn't delivered, took matters into her own hands, confronting store employees with an assault rifle. The woman went to a Sprint store in North Carolina and demanded the workers hand over cell phones. She then walked out with her rifle and the stolen goods. Employees say that same woman was in the store several days earlier, arguing with them about a cell phone that hadn't been shipped to her. Moscow mule drinkers in Iowa will no longer be served their drink in the old solid copper mug that it comes in. The mugs are now banned. 
It's part of the fun, is the it's mug. It's the whole right? thing. <laughs> the law comes after it was determined the high concentration of copper in the mugs can be poisonous and cause foodborne illness. The law says copper cannot touch any food with a pH level below six, and Moscow mules fall in that category. Bars can only use copper mugs if the interior is lined with metal or stainless steel. It's science. It makes sense, doesn't it? Why didn't uh, we figure this out before? I, We've been drinking these for a years, long time. Making mm. people sick. Uh, it's time to talk sports, I guess. Yeah, uh, that's uh, that's you. That means me. Let's talk Tigers. <laughs> Coming over here. Hey, all right. Tigers back to action tonight. Justin Verlander on the mound. We've got some exciting highlights all the way around. You're going to want to stick around. When our client. All right, sports tonight. Justin Verlander on the mound in Baltimore tonight. As a Tiger, he's still a Tiger. I probably should have mentioned that earlier, I guess. Uh, he got an early lead thanks to Jimmy Ducey and a greedy Orioles fan. Watch this, a fan out there. This is deep to left. It's going over the wall. But uh, he leans in to help it into the stands. The Tiger fan right behind him loves it. And then he's, eh, I'll just throw it back, you know. Top of the eighth. Now base is loaded. One out. Justin Upton in a 2-1 game unloads a grand slam. That's his third grand slam of the season. JV loves it because that's going to give him the win. Tigers go up 5-2. Now, how about a little web gem there? Iglesias. Are you kidding me? A little spin. I got one more. You like that web gem? We got another one. How about uh, Mikey Matuk? Deep to left center. It's, it's going back, back. It's not getting out of here. Mikey's got it. Big catch. Tigers win at 5-2. Verlander on, on, on the money tonight. Seven innings, six hits, two earned runs, 10 Ks, no walks. Here's reaction. The momentum crusher for them with the grand slam. I mean, that was a big moment with a guy who doesn't give up many runs. So when all those things happen and we've been playing really good baseball, I mean, it, it makes the game fun and it helps, uh, you know, it makes, uh, you know, you, you end up having games like this and defense ends up feeding off that. In all that, a funny moment in the game tonight. Check this out. Something that usually happens in Little League games. Everybody lost track of how many outs there were. Jonathan Scope up to bat. Justin Verlander gets him to swing and miss here. It's three outs. He kind of starts to walk to the dugout, but the guys start throwing it around the infield. It's three outs. He's still looking. He looks, watch Justin look into the dugout. Osmus yells, it's three outs. He goes, that's what I thought. So finally they realize it's three outs, boom. Get off the field, fellas. We got some hitting to do. The fans are like, yeah, man, we knew it. It's just like a little league. It's three outs. Football now, you probably don't know Jared Davis yet. Well, once upon a time, he was the 764th ranked player coming out of high school in Georgia. Found his way to Florida, where he became a star linebacker. Then after being drafted 21st overall by the Lions, he's on the rise again. Now a rookie in the NFL and setting a tone the coaches like. He does have some innate leadership ability, and um, you know a lot of that's how he works. Even as a young guy, he works extremely hard. But we're a little only a short ways down the road now. You know, it's, 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 it's just wait and see. We haven't played a game yet. You know, we haven't done anything in preseason yet. Just, but but he's coming along. No, we don't want to wait and see. Put him in the Hall of Fame right now. They strapped on the pads for the first time in East Lansing today as the Spartans try and rebound after Mark D'Antonio's worst season as the MSU head coach. The defensive line and the secondary will need people to step up this season after major losses there. D'Antonio likes what he sees from his freshmen, and he also likes seeing the guys have a little fun, something that was scarce during last year's 3-9 and nine season. First day of practice always, you know, everybody comes out here and puts their best foot forward, as we always do, and uh, a lot of retention, as there always is, but... Tough to judge people when you're in um, shorts and things of that nature, but I thought uh, got a lot of, you know, did a lot of things out there, and you know, we came back healthy. A lot of retention. We're hoping that's a good thing. USA Hockey is named former NHLer and one-time Red Wings assistant Tony Granato, the new head coach. Granato had just finished his first season as head coach at Wisconsin. Now he'll try and win some gold for the Americans, and he'll do it with Chris Chelios as an assistant coach. That's if he can keep the ageless one from suiting up and actually taking the ice. The problem with Chris is, and we joked about it last night at dinner, is right now he's probably skating somewhere thinking we're asking him to play as well. He's probably going to apply for the player assistant coaching position for all of us that know Chris. And, and I'm probably not lying. And I think that's probably what he's doing today. Chelios wants to keep playing. By the way, Clarissa Shields fighting tonight. She's on Showtime. Three rounds. She's dominant in oh, the early rounds. Yeah, that's Hopefully on her way to a big me. win there. That'll awesome. be good. Okay. We are out of time. Thanks for being with us for Local 4 News at 11. Your next news starts at 6 a.m. with Local 4 News today. Tonight's show is next, everybody. Have a great weekend.